Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Okay, hello everyone, welcome back. We're live here in Las Vegas for HP Discover. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of Silicon Valley. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder and chief analyst at wikibon.org. Dave, this is day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Again, you know, going to bring, bring the energy, always the third day is always kind of like a you know, reflection, what's going on. We've had a chance to uh, talk to the thought leaders, the executives, some of the entrepreneurs, and customers. Uh, and more importantly, get the metadata at the parties, because that's the best part. You know, when people are loose, um, a little, little social lubrication. Um, they start talking, we start listening, and we start extracting. So, uh, great time last night at the HP Cloud Party, and the night before, obviously, the, the storage party. Um, we also swung by the storage group. All the key areas software. that we're interested in, I mean, software group, sorry. Um, Great action, and you know, again, this is our, you know, I think our fifth year covering HP events uh, internationally, both here in the U.S. and in Barcelona and in Frankfurt. And I got to say, Dave, we've been, we have been chronicling the, the turnaround for HP, and uh, it's been fun. It's been, it's been interesting, um, and the commentary uh, off camera is just as good as the commentary on camera. Uh, I just got to say, it's been fun, and uh, it's interesting. HP is not, not, they're not letting go. I mean, the, the ship is, might have taken on water, so to speak, um, but clearly, Meg has got the boat turned for all, whatever the consequences will be, she is turning the, the ship into the direction, kind of what I call away from the iceberg. So, you know, don't slalom with icebergs in the North Atlantic if you don't have to, you know, hit the more calmer waters. But HP still has that mojo. They still bring in the integration of autonomy, which was a, a real tough uh, pill to swallow at that time, given all the controversy around that. But maintaining their innovation strategy while trying to balance a fiscal turnaround and really trimming the numbers out and trying to be uh, a performance driven from a, from a number standpoint, producing cash flow, billions of dollars in cash flow positives. So, you know, great, great to see. What's your take and, you know, from the interviews and the uh, event last night uh, and the metadata that you're hearing? Well, I think when you assess a company the size of HP, you got to look at several factors. One is organization. Uh, the second is management, the people in charge of that, or those, those organizational constructs. The third is the product and the solution set. Uh, the fourth is to go to market, and the fifth is where you're investing for the future and how you're communicating that you're relevant to the customers. And I think if you look at the HP turnaround that we have been documenting, there have been some organizational changes, there have been some specific management changes. I think clearly Meg didn't trust the information that she was getting from guys like Dave Donatelli, and now most recently George Kadifa. She made some changes, she put Bill, Bill Vecti in charge. He's brought some of his people in. We've seen some other shuffling going on. You know, some of those are minor adjustments, others are fairly major. So, that's one piece. The second piece is the product and the solution. And I think that two or three years ago, HP said, wow, <coughs> excuse me, we have to be <laughs> in cloud. We really don't have a good cloud story. We got on-premise cloud, okay, but we got Amazon coming after us. We really don't have comparable capabilities for hybrid cloud. So they started to initiate that. I think, John, you've done an outstanding job of documenting the HP cloud journey with guys like Sar Gilai. Um, and I think we're now finally at the point where HP can start going to market and ramping its cloud up. I think they finally got a product that can actually sell. You, know, you, can, you can judge that by guys like Kerry Bailey that they brought in uh, and Bobby Patrick you know, from the go to market side. I think the other thing <clears throat> is the future. Where is HP investing? How is it getting back to its roots? Mike, Mike Wheatley is just about to post an article talking about this, talking about the machine, talking about what Martin Fink uh, discussed yesterday, how HP is going to remain relevant for the future. And it seems like HP is betting, doubling down, tripling down, maybe even quadrupling down on its core systems business, building the next generation, highly scalable machine, putting forth a new storage paradigm, which is all in memory or in persistent memory with Memristore, which has started and stopped and started and stopped. So, big question is, is that back on track? I would say this, John, I think of all the discoveries we've been to, this is the most positive that I've seen with regard to the future of HP. And the last thing I'll add is the software piece, which again, Kadifa out, Young John's in, you're going to see a lot more emphasis on autonomy, Vertica, leveraging those assets. I think that group was a mess when George took it over. I think Kadifa probably did some good things. It just didn't happen fast enough for Meg. 
Now it's up to Young Johns, and I think the key to watch for Young Johns is the developer community. It's something, John, that you've harped on. You and I both talked to him about it. Last year at Barcelona, we're starting to see signs that HP is getting more developer friendly. Yeah, and Dave, we have the finger on the pulse with HP. There's no doubt about it. I got to say that we've, we've done a good <coughs> job of embedding in and from a reporting standpoint. You know, we, we obviously do the reporting side with the journalism. We have sort of social media presence here as well, as well as the analyst side covered. So really three-prong uh, extraction strategy for our, our organization within HP. And I got to say, I, I, you know, relative to the HP software, I do want to comment on George Kadifa. You really can't blame George Kadifa for anything. That guy is a phenomenal executive, great individual, high class, high integrity. He's a world-class manager. That was just a really, really, like, like a difficult assignment. He had to take, essentially, the autonomy acquisition and the, the value of, say, HP Vertica and put that together. And what George and his team have done with Colin Mahoney and, and bringing through the autonomy politics just on its own was massive. So, so if you look at what Kadifa has done with HP software, it is, it is a world-class, save in my mind, you know, you, you know, it is like, you know, the big save in the game. He really saved that, that whole organization. He kept it together and he put it on a, on a path and that's his background. He worked at Silver Lake. He understands that market. He's kind of a corp dev guy. Um, you know, he is the guy to do that. And what he did was fantastic. He exploded HP Vertica into a powerhouse from a small startup, you know, less than half a billion dollar acquisition, roughly 300 and change, into the staple of value for HP software. He took the, the shatters of an autonomy acquisition and, and pieced together the value. Young Johns came in with his savvy, clearly the more, the more savvy software guy in terms of getting in the weeds and knowing all the nuances of software, but Kadifa put it together. So you got to give the credit to Kadifa, and in no way did he fail, in my opinion. Now, but Young Didn't Johns, Meg blame him? You said you can't blame Kadifa. Didn't Meg blame him? Did I she don't, just shoot him? Well, I don't, you know, it's not publicly that he was fired. I mean, I well, think- he was moved out of his senior well, vice president, general manager role. He was running the, the show. Now he's, now he's doing some strategy role. It's yeah, like Donatelli. Look, I mean, that's a that's a velvet box, isn't it? HP. I is think on, you're sugarcoating this, John. HP. <laughs> HP is on a turnaround. No, I just think it's too hard. I mean, come on. Look, if you. I, I like George Kadifa. I think he did a good job. I agree with you. But Meg blamed him. I think that's my interpretation. Well, I, I, had, I saw no public record of that. There's no. No. I had, when would they ever to publicly say that? They didn't publicly the say number, they blamed Donatelli. The, num the numbers weren't there, obviously. So for that reason, you got to look at the operational side. And but, that's what happened but then to Donatelli. Again, you know, Meg's got a five-year turnaround plan. Some will say that Dave is really too too long in in these ex accelerated cycles of innovation. I would agree with that. Maybe. That's five years is too long. Maybe it should have been two and a half years. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> the, the pot calling the kettle black if that's the case. But I'm, you know, my, my feeling is, look, if we look at the data, right, what Kadifa did in terms of the software group was phenomenal. And I'm not just saying that because I know the guy, I know him personally, and I've seen what he's done. I mean, Haven, all the stuff that was put in place. And it wasn't like Young Johns was on the sidelines. He was making it happen. So, you know, I think Young Johns is a great executive run that organization. I think he knows all the nuances on the product side. And getting that product market fit ultimately is where the revenue will kick in. And in my opinion, they are poised to do some good work there. On the, um, on the other side of the organization, Cloud, you know, uh, Bill Hilf is really impressive. This guy is sharp, he knows the issue, He's a young executive. He's going to rise fast in the organization. And I think with guys like Bill Hilf, Sargalai, uh, Kerry, and the team they're putting together is fantastic. I'm very, very impressed with how fast that they've gone to the next level with this team. So with Martin Fink running engineering, you're going to see, I think, a lot more activity. And my, my forecast for HP Cloud is you will see some massive moves. I think there'll be some inorganic, um, some M&A deals. I think they're going to go target some specific things in the white space, and I think that's going to help them. They have to do that. Let me ask you a question <clears throat> on the cloud. I want to get your opinion on this. When you think about what Amazon and Google and, and very much to a large extent Microsoft are doing with Azure in terms of the public cloud, the swipe the credit card, true cloud definition as Amazon sort of put it forth in 2006 and beyond. If you look at what HP's doing, it's really about the so-called hybrid cloud, and it's, it's really a minor contribution from the public cloud, is my take. Is that the right strategy? Do they have to beef up their public cloud more? What about IBM? Are, are they going to be more of a public cloud player? Are the big whales in enterprise IT going to stick to their hybrid cloud, really private cloud mission? Because that's really what it is. It's a private cloud with a little bit of public cloud sprinkled in. Or do they have to go whole hog on public cloud, in your opinion? 
That, that's a tough one, Dave. That's, you know, that's a really tough one to address. I, mean, I have a couple different uh, opinions. I kind of I go bipolar on this one. One, on one hand, you want to meet to Amazon Cloud, right? You want to have that public, public capability, because you, know, you look at the developers. They want public cloud, they want a last, highly elastic, massively scalable global platform. On the other side, HP's got a lot of customers that want enterprise requirements. There, you shift to more of what a Red Hat-like strategy, where you have to support it. At the end of the day, support is everything. You can't have a incoherent product strategy when you talk about support for the enterprise. You know, DevOps is a great thing. We love to promote DevOps, but you know, as Theo, um, Theo said on the, on the Cube many times, um, it's ops dev. When you start getting into, we, it can't fail, that's an issue, right? So, I think HP is kind of stuck in the middle here in the strategy, and I think what they're trying to do is flank on two fronts. Let's get some public cloud, call it R&D, call it whatever you want, get that up and running as a sandbox for the technology they're incubating. Helion is showing some promise in terms of strategy and direction. At the same time, they got real customers that have demands, so you really can't be half pregnant here. You got to go all in on both fronts. So what I see is, is that I see the public cloud being kind of more of a front end for developers, and really moving into the hybrid cloud with Helion, where OpenStack is a critical component of that game. HP is a huge opportunity to take their mojo in systems management, monitoring, uh, support, and bring some serious uh, jewels to the table with OpenStack. And again, they own almost half the positions on the uh, product leadership there at OpenStack. I think it is a tough one, and I'm sort of bipolar on it too. I think the, the way in which guys like HP, and I, and I think VMware and EMC would answer that question as well, is say, hey, we have a network. HP just announced the Helion network. Uh, you know, v, the VMware vCloud hybrid service, EMC's got a, a Velocity Partners program, that we're going to enable our partners to be the ones that compete directly with Amazon. Having said that, I don't know if that's going to work. I don't know if they're going to have the scale to compete with the Amazons and Googles of the world. They might, some of them might, but generally there's a lot of hosting companies in there, uh, there's a lot of smaller cloud service providers, a lot of tier two and tier three guys that are maybe specialized in certain industries where I think that Amazon, Google, and Microsoft are just massive, massive scale. So maybe if somebody you know, partners up with, for instance, John, uh, you know, IO Data Center, one of the, the firms that, that we introduced our community to back at uh, VMworld in 2013, George Schlesman's company, they've got the scale. But what they don't have is the servers, the storage, the networking, the infrastructure pieces, all the orchestration pieces. Maybe if they become part of that ecosystem or companies like them, they could compete at scale. It's a tough one. I mean, you know, we heard uh, Antonio Nier yesterday, got, you know, I was like running two groups now, service and networking. Uh, I talked to some folks last night uh, off the record and essentially it's pretty clear. Their strategy is about compute. Uh, they're looking at the integration of the convergence, converged infrastructure as a critical, critical part. And his comment about not giving up on the servers, Dave, was pretty telling. And you know, when you asked him the question about the x86, the IBM move, you know, Neary responded pretty candidly and he didn't even blink. He's like, it's very clear, our strategy is on course. We think that you have to be a player in the infrastructure equipment to be a winner in the cloud, hybrid cloud on-prem. On-prem, it's not going away. And you know, we, we've been saying that all along. It's, it's a hybrid model of on-prem in the cloud for the next at least 10 years. And ultimately, I think the cloud will play a much more dominant role. So, you know, sometimes the best move, Dave, is not to make a move. I think what HP's doing right now is they got the two fronts with the public and, and hybrid cloud, call private in there, just on-prem, but going out there, they don't really have to make this decision right now, but if they play their cards right and innovate on those two fronts, they can then cherry pick the technologies that make sense for them. I mean, I was speculating last night, again, my opinion, that HP should buy Rackspace. Put the numbers aside, I don't know if it's going to be even possible, but if Rackspace is for sale, why not pick up Rackspace? You know, they have a cloud, they have a hosting environment, IBM has soft layer. That might be an interesting play for HP. If they had the dough, and they had the guts to do it, and I'm not sure Meg would want to stomach that kind of uh, acquisition, but that's an interesting play. If HP had rack space, what would they do with it? What about the, um, what about the developer angle? You're seeing Cloud Foundry a lot, you're seeing Cloud Foundry do a deal for IBM Bluemix, you're seeing HP participate in Cloud Foundry. What about the developer angle, John? What's your take on that? This is something that's close to my heart because we're close with the developers in, in, the, in the emerging modern infrastructure, both on the consumer side uh, and also on the enterprise. And this is a huge opportunity for HP. If they blow this, they could lose the whole, whole game. And let me tell you why. 
The new modern infrastructure is a combination of new talent coming in that's hard to find. It's the young guns that have a DevOps mindset that will evolve into IT enterprise and, and, and cloud, cloud development. And then you have the old guys who know distributed large-scale computing systems, right? So those guys are going to be tweaked. At the same time of the talent war, you have a complete reconstruction. That's the stuff that we talk about all the time on theCUBE. The business process innovation, the value chains that are being tweaked, the different products that are going to come out and converge infrastructure all the way up to the top of the stack. But the developers that want to build out the next generation have now the opportunity with cloud, and what Amazon has shown is that you can actually do some, some really, really agile, fast development. That is the DevOps way. If you can back that up with the kind of support and industrial strength of infrastructure, HP is in a perfect position. So if they can leverage their work with OpenStack and can get their act together on both the software front Okay, in Young John's organization, which has also the big data piece, and then bring that into what the, what the cloud group has going on with OpenStack, they could really win the developers. They could win those guys over. They could provide a great place, open standards, open source based frameworks for the enterprise. So to me, I think strategically, that is a game changer. HP should be 100% on this. They should put in their best people on it, in my opinion, and I have not seen that yet. I talked to everyone, you hear a little bit here, a little bit there. Best people on developers, that's what I want to see from HP. Last point I want to make about the turnaround is if, uh, if you're an investor and you bet on HP in, in the past year, uh, HP was a dog of the Dow in 2013, it started to you know, turn, turn things around, uh, and so, yeah, that from a, you know, a technical standpoint, I guess that was a good move, but I think, John, the fact that HP is, is so undervalued, I'm putting that in quotes, relative to other technology companies, I mean, it's basically trading for 50 cents on the revenue dollar, I think there's a lot of upside there. HP's a cash flow machine, it continues to pay down its debt. So Meg's doing a good job from a financial standpoint. I do think there's a lot of upside in this company from a, from a stock perspective and a valuation perspective. Okay folks, this is day three. We're bringing the energy, we're bringing the analysis. So this is theCUBE here live in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2014. Go to crowdchat.net slash HP Discover and join the conversation. Uh, Bert Lattimore's moderating uh, a great chat over there, Bert, uh, good job. And uh, come in and comment, ask some questions, comment to the threads, and uh, have some fun with us. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>